Greetings from the United States of America. I want to say Happy New Year to you. I trust that all of you had a wonderful Christmas and now are anticipating a wonderful new year. And I'll tell you that my prayer for the new year is that God would cause me to be more fruitful, uh, more effective for the, the kingdom and for the sake of the gospel than ever before. And primarily, I'm asking God to use me in a great way and use you in a great way to impact the city of Quito in a greater way than the city of Quito has ever been impacted with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the intent and the purpose of me uh, sending along this video, this short training to you. And I have to tell you that it is my desire and my prayer that in the next few months, God would open a door and make a way for me not only to communicate with you online and through video means, but also to be back in Quito with you, to work hand-in-hand -hand with you, face-to-face. -face. And so that's my prayer. I would ask you to pray for that. And let's begin to look forward to the day when we can reunite together in Quito and work together to advance the gospel. But until then, I want to share some thoughts with you regarding discipleship that I trust and pray would be beneficial and advantageous for you. I trust that you will uh, be able to look into God's Word and study with me uh, regarding what the Bible says about discipleship. And once again, if you have questions, if there are conversations and uh, issues that you want to address personally, please feel free to email me and contact me, and I will uh, be very glad and welcoming the opportunity to dialogue with you regarding these issues that will help all of us to be better disciples and disciple makers. When you and I were together just a few months ago, we talked about the theological foundations for discipleship. We looked at the grand narrative of God, how the Bible is really the story of God. Uh, Genesis chapter 1 and 2 talks about the, the story of creation, chapter 3 and 4, uh, and really chapters 3 verse through, uh, chapters 3 through uh, chapter 11 talk about the problem of sin and how man has fallen and sin now separates us from God. But beginning in chapter 12, really throughout the entire Bible, what we have is God's record of his response and his answer for the problem of sin. And so we're really looking at the entire picture of the Bible, the entire uh, story of God, how God is redeeming and reconciling through the death of his son uh, those of us who have been uh, alienated from God through sin. And what you and I want to look at is how does discipleship fit into that story? We talked about that when we were together. But in these few moments, I want to look more practically at what it means to be a disciple. You and I can talk about disciple making all day long. We can come up with programs and with goals and we can come up with a, uh, a method of how to make disciples. But if we don't understand what it means to be a disciple, we will never effectively and fruitfully multiply ourselves and be able to make other disciples that glorify and honor Christ. So what I want to do very briefly is walk you through the New Testament to show you and to remind myself of what it really looks like to be a disciple. Uh, throughout the New Testament, the word disciple is used over and over again, but it's very important that you and I understand what that means and what it looks like in my life and yours if we are disciples of Jesus Christ. So the question is simply this, what is a disciple? Uh, Mark chapter uh, 8, verse 34 and 35, Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever will save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. The first characteristic of a disciple is a disciple is one who is a follower of Christ, who follows anywhere at any cost. So let me say that again. A follower of Christ is a disciple. And a disciple of Christ is one who follows Christ no matter where and no matter what the cost. So when we look at the lives of the disciples in the New Testament, the, the first disciples, uh, we see those characteristics. These were men who uh, 
many of them uh, left their families and they left their livelihoods. They left their vocations. Their entire lives were turned upside down because of their willingness to follow Jesus Christ. And so I have to ask my own, my own self, is my life characterized by a denial of self uh, for the sake of Christ? It's very important to understand that when Jesus says that a disciple is one who takes up his cross and follows Christ, he is not merely saying that we are to live lives of self-denial for the sake of self-denial. It would be very easy for us to say, well, if we want to be disciples of Christ, we have to refuse ourselves of the comforts and the joys and the pleasures of life. That's certainly not what Jesus is talking about. What Jesus is saying is that you and I must be willing to lay down whatever must be sacrificed in order to follow Christ. It's not enough merely to refuse ourselves pleasures and comfort. Uh, you know, that doesn't make us any more spiritual than those who have all the comforts and pleasures in the world. What Christ is saying is, listen, you must identify with me. As believers, we have a new master. We have a new ruler and sovereign in our life. And the Bible clearly teaches that you and I are called and mandated to identify with Christ in his suffering and in his death. We find this throughout uh, the scriptures in 1 Peter chapter 4. Beloved, do not be surprised by the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though some strange thing were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's suffering. Uh, I'll give you a few other references. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. Philippians chapter 3, verse uh, 7 through 11. Romans chapter 6. Paul says, for if we have been united with him, in his death, we certainly shall be united with him in his resurrection. So throughout the New Testament, and there's many, many more passages I could give you if we, if we had the time. Maybe I'll give you those later. The many passages throughout the New Testament that remind us that we are to identify in the most intimate manner with our new sovereign and our new master of our lives, Jesus Christ. 